Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Mesh Seibel. I'm so excited to be here in Orlando, Florida at the annual meeting of the North American Menopause Society. We've got experts gathered here from all over the world to bring you the latest information on menopause. I'm so excited to share this information with you. So let me ask you just to state your name. My name is Kimberly Steele. And where are you located? I'm located at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine um, under the Johns Hopkins Center for Bariatric Surgery. I want to say I'm at the North American Menopause Society meeting. I oh, have heard I Dr. Steele just give a fantastic plenary session talk about bariatric surgery, which translates into weight loss hopefully successful and sustainable weight loss for the patient and uh, the resolution of their comorbidities. So who's a good candidate to have surgery to lose weight? I think that we have to still follow the NIH guidelines, uh, which right now are still from 1991, which state that a patient who has a BMI greater than or equal to 40 with, without any medical complications, or a patient with a BMI of uh, 35 or greater with multiple medical co comorbidities. Uh, so a BMI is a body mass index, body mass index. and that's an indicator of weight that uses your uh, your height and your weight together in a mathematical formula. So basically people who are really pretty darn overweight um, and basically if you need a seat extender in the airplane you've probably got a BMI of uh, 40 and if your BMI is 35 you're not quite that big but if you have that plus some other illnesses you're a candidate. Yes. Now um, the FDA did in 2011, February of 2011, approve the lap band which is an allergen product uh, for BMI 30 or greater mm -hmm. um, when the patient has severe medical problems. Um, now a, a lap band is what? A lap band is basically a plastic device. Um, it looks like a belt. It sits around the top part of the stomach. It's attached to a catheter and the catheter is attached to a port. It looks very similar to a metaport. That metaport is placed just under the skin in your fat and it sits on your abdominal wall. And the uh, you can't see it, you can feel it though. And you come in and the doctor uh, gives you adjustments and they place saline solution into that port. And that tightens the band. The so tighter the it is, the more restrictive it is. It's so you put like a wristband around the top of the stomach. Yes and kind of make it tight for the food to get through. Yes. And then that little band has a little tube that goes off to just under your skin, yes. under your ribs, and the doctor will fill that with saline to make the wristband tighter or Correct. looser. Right, and the idea is that it's restriction only. Uh, it is the le least invasive of the procedures that we uh, offer, um, and basically it decreases the amount that you can eat at any one time. Mm -hmm. However, a patient has to realize it does not decrease their hunger. And so a patient who eats ice cream, milkshakes, I said in the, the talk, M&Ms that melt your mouth, not your hands, potato chips, um, you know, sugary beverages, you can imagine that over time they're not going to drop the weight because that just slithers through the band. So you can eat your way literally through it by putting liquids and stuff, but if you Correct. eat solid food and just much more of it at a meal, this will slow you down. Slow you down, right. Now the other thing is too, patients have to be aware if they're grazers, and what we mean by grazers is they pick all day long, small amounts, this too will not lead to a very good result with the band. Now. In addition to putting a band or something to restrict the entrance to the stomach, you can also remove take, part take of the stomach. Take part of the stomach, yes. Tell, so, tell me about that. That's called the laparoscopic vertical sleeve gastrectomy. It used to be or still is part of the duodenal switch. Uh, and what doctors were finding is that you can just do that portion of the procedure and patients have very nice results. The idea is that you take a stomach that's about the size of a football and you make it about the size of a banana, so it holds about 100 cc's. It's also fairly restrictive. Some people say that it also gives you some component of um, a less hunger because you are removing some of the ghrelin uh, component. Mm -hmm. However, that's a hormone that, that uh, makes stomach, you feel hungry. Correct, and that's what the stomach releases. So uh, there is some literature that suggests that it does decrease the ghrelin and, and decreases your hunger. That's G-H-R-E-L-I-N, hormone ghrelin. So uh, what happens is we remove at least three quarters of the stomach. 
Now the idea is the patient has to realize once we remove it, we can't give it back. Um, and they're left with a very tiny stomach and it restricts the amount that they can eat at any one time. Again, very similar to the band, if you eat liquid foods, if you graze all day long, it's not gonna work. You have to um, understand that you've gotta follow a specific diet and be compliant to have good success. But um, generally, we are seeing very nice results. Um, there's approximately five year data out now that suggests patients are losing at least 40% of their estimated excess body weight so with whatever less complications. However much they are overweight, mm -hmm. they're gonna lose about 40% of that overweight Correct. part. So if they're 100 pounds overweight, they would lose approximately 40 pounds. Okay. Now there's a yet a more uh, involved surgery. Correct. So the laparoscopic room wide gastric bypass or the open room wide gastric bypass, which we um, offer to patients, is both a restrictive and a malabsorptive procedure. This procedure has a restrictive component where we actually transect the stomach and make a very tiny pouch about the size of an egg. And we also uh, bypass a portion of the stomach uh, to allow malabsorption. Very minimal malabsorption, but enough that the two of these processes, both restrictive and malabsorptive, help the patient lose weight. And we're able to tell patients that at least 80% of the patients who undergo this procedure will lose anywhere from 50 to 75% of their estimated excess body weight. That's and a lot. 50 to 75% of the amount yes. overweight you are will go away. So what this operation does, as I understand it, is you disconnect the stomach from the tube that comes down to it, the esophagus, yes. and you leave it in. And you also uh, make a cut in the uh, small wow. intestine uh, about 100 centimeters away. That's probably about, uh, 20, about uh, two feet away. And then you connect the part, those two parts, you connect the you just leave that other part in there. It's all living and fine, but it's not getting any food. The, correct. And that part that we say is not getting any food um, is the part that secretes or that carries the chemicals and the and the products from the liver, so bile, and the pancreas, the pancreatic enzymes that help digest the food. So that those chemicals are brought down through that tiny part of, or through that portion of the small bowel that then meets up with the food distal to where it usually meets up. And that's why. So you why still digest your food. Yes, but at a further um, distance. And so that's what creates more weight loss for the patient and why we're seeing nice results. The other advantage of the room wide gastric bypass is the fact that you have these resolution of medical problems so quickly. And clearly, right after surgery, we see patients whose diabetes go away, their blood pressure goes away, and some of them are leaving the hospital off their medications um, immediately after the surgery. And the reason you do this surgery is not because they're fat, it's no. because they have diseases that are caused by obesity, Correct. right? I'm very clear with the patients that I operate on that this is not cosmetic, that it is work um, and a lifetime commitment. And as long as they're compliant, they should sail through it. I really do believe um, the patients that do what they're supposed to do, do great. And the ones that are non-compliant and they will admit to it are the ones that we generally don't see the success or they have problems. And those problems can be very significant. Um, when they follow what they're supposed to do, we're seeing really nice results. And I think the big thing is to realize it is major surgery and there's no snapping of a finger, mag waving a magic wand for these patients. They have to understand that they have to commit to it and to do the work to have the success. And with that, the success will come. So this is something that if people are really overweight, and this is not just means you don't fit in your uh, bathing suit the way you want, but if you're really overweight, that they, they should talk with their doctors about it. I really think so. I think the idea is um, and I try to, again, state this to my patients, I don't operate on anyone. The benefit has to, has to outweigh the risk. The benefit is that we relieve you of the medical problems. You know, the risks are surgery, and those are huge, and so you have to weigh them. But a patient who is uh, overweight or obese carries with them multiple medical problems, and those medical problems over time become a real issue for their health. And so um, right now, surgery seems to be the best sustainable option for them. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. Okay, thank you.